Welcome back to Sports Talk ATL. I am Chase Earl, joined by Alex Lord. The Hawks upset the Heat in the play-in tournament, setting up a date with the Boston Celtics. And as we said, after the Hawks upset the Heat, there might not be a worse matchup for this Hawks team. And that that's not really, the matchup is bad, yes. But also just the Celtics are probably the deepest, and I, in my opinion, the best team in the NBA. You know, they were just in the NBA Finals. I, they beat the Bucs last year. I don't really see any reason why they shouldn't beat the Bucs this year. Uh, maybe Middleton healthy. I, that's, th- those two are even. But the West, West Co- Western Conference is wide open. Um, I, I think you look at complete teams, Boston's number one. So winning this series would be a miracle. Let's just say that. Getting it to seven games, I would say, is, would be a miracle. I say six games is the goal. And I know you don't want to say that. I know that's not what the Hawks are thinking. But listen, the Hawks played really well. Uh, last time out against the Heat. If they play like that, they should be able to hold hold home court at the very least those first two games. I think winning Boston might be near impossible, but well, let's try to get this thing to six games, in my opinion. Yeah, I mean, just a terrible matchup. Up and down the depth chart, coaching, you know, Quinn Snyder doesn't really have his nails dug into this team yet. Um, so <laughs> there's really – I think six games would be a resounding success, and obviously these guys don't think of it like that. And they just played their best game of the season. I don't think it's crazy to say that Heat game was the best game of the season. It was the most complete team win. Trey Young, you know, he did his thing, but he, it wasn't even his top ten best games this season. Um, so if Trey Young comes out and, you know, puts on a show like we know he can, uh, and the rest of the team does what they – did against the heat, you know, being physical, being aggressive, making it a point to rebound every single shot, you know, effort, every single minute when you're on the court effort. Uh, I don't think, you know, pushing it to six games is crazy. I would be ecstatic if we got it to six games, seven games. That's NBA finals to me. I mean, seven games with the best, like you said, the best team in the NBA. I mean, for a team that went 500 this season, everybody expected to lose in the play-in. You know, that's... Listen, yeah. listen. The Boston Celtics, I, I think it was 2008 when they got Kevin Garnett, Paul Pierce, Ray Allen. First year of the big three. They came in as the one C, dominated the regular season. Everyone had them as the heavy favorites to win the NBA Finals. First year, the Hawks made the playoffs, and I think and I think they went on to make the playoffs for the next 10 years. But they got that first matchup as the eight seed versus the Celtics. They held home court, won all three games at home, lost in a blowout in game seven. It wasn't even like near. It was so uncompetitive. It wasn't <laughs> even funny. But yeah, they, they pushed it to seven games. So anything can happen. And, and what I say about this team with the Hawks, and, and I said this when, after the Heat game, when you have a guy like Trey Young, he, he can win you a game on his own. And Trey Young, DeJounte Murray, like if those guys come out and play like the All-Stars and, and Trey Young superstar level that he can – they can push you over the top. Now, the thing about the Celtics is they got two guys of their own and Jalen Brown and, and Jason Tatum. So those guys can push you over the top. So for them to have any chance at making this a competitive series, because the depth of the two rosters isn't even comparable. I, I think the Hawks depth shined in the heat game, but I don't think that's something you can expect every game. The Celtics, on the other hand, have probably the deepest roster in the NBA. So you're going to need your superstars to outdo their superstars. And I'm sorry, I don't know if there's a better star duo than Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum. And I like DeJounte and Trey, but that, that's a tall task. If you're even going to compete, right? It's a tough matchup. <clears throat> and what's worse is, you know, their stars are terrible matchups defensively for us. I mean, John Collins probably going to have to – I don't even know. You can't put John Collins on that. And DeAndre Hunter is a little bit bigger. He's kind of a slow forward, honestly, though he shouldn't be. Jason Tatum probably eats him alive. I don't have much faith in that. But on the other hand, you know, you got Trey Young, and there's not – you know, Trey Young's going to do one or two things. He's going to pull up from deep, or he's going to attack the basket and dish it deep into the paint. Uh, and good luck stopping it. You know, you know it's coming, but nobody can stop it. So we have our own superstars, um, superstar, I would say, um, while the Celtics probably have two. Um, I wanted to ask you this question because I saw somebody mention it. Rank the players in this series. Rank the top five players in this series in order. Uh, I'm going Jason Tatum one. Um 
I, I think I'd piss a lot of Hawks fans if I went to <laughs> I Brown. But I like listen, bro. I think I'd go Jalen Brown too. And then Dre Young, then DeJounte. Um, then I think a lot of Heat players or a lot of not Heat Celtics players. Uh I'd go probably Brogdon. Um I mean, Derek White, Marcus Smart, I feel like those are all better. I mean, like, listen, John Collins to me, like, if we get the John Collins of old, like, he might be right there at five. But it, the John Collins we saw this season, like, he's they not even seen he's him not in even, years. He's, he, he's not even better than Al Horford. So, <laughs> it, it, it's rough. I do like Sadiq Bey, though. I mean, I don't, I don't think he's up there with the top guys, but he has been a really big addition to this team. And he had 17 points and 17 shots. I mean, he's he's a he's a microwave off the bench, uh, something the bench desperately needed. So, he's been a good addition. I think he'll be key to the series. One thing I think that the Hawks showed, though, against the Heat, who like to play a little smaller lineups with Bam at the five and stuff like that. The Hawks can play a little bit of bully ball. They out-rebounded the hell out of the heat, 63-39 to in that game, and that was the difference in the game. Now, the Celtics are a great defensive team, and and, and they rebound the ball well as a team, but they're small. Like, they start Al Horford as the center. Guys, Al Horford is not a center. I knew this back when he was a Hawk. He was not a center. He is not a center in this league. Clint Capella should have a field day on Al Horford on the boards, just like he did against the Heat. Onyeke Kongwu should have a field day on the boards. Now, I think they're going to have to put Robert Williams in this series, who they've only played like 35 games. Um, but they they're, they have a small lineup. So if there's a place where you can attack this team, it's going to be on the boards, and it's going to have to be out physicaling them um, on the boards, I, I think, because you're not going to outskill them. They're too deep. You're not, you're not going to play better defense than them. So I think you're just going to have to want it more like you saw against the Heat. Yeah, it's going to have to be a scrappy one because they shoot better, they defend better, they do a lot of things better than the Hawks. Um, that just made me think, Onyeka Kongwu could probably be a better matchup for Al Horford, and Clint Capella is probably a better matchup for Robert Williams. Uh, not that Onyeka is going to start, but you know that's a thought. Um, I'm thinking, how are you going to defend Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown? I mean, DeAndre Hunter is going to take probably Tatum, uh, DeJounte Murray, maybe on Brown. And then you put, I guess, John Collins on Derek. I mean, any way you slice it, it doesn't look pretty for the Hawks. Um, I feel like they're going to have to put John Collins kind of out on the perimeter more than they want. Way more than you want. Yeah. John Collins is, I mean, as good of a effort player he is, I he's going to give Murray you all he can. He's, ter- he's, te- he's a terrible perimeter defender, especially against wings like Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown. I mean, and I, just I, don't, I, yeah, I just don't really see like what else they're going to do with them. J- I, I think uh, Jalen Johnson isn't a, he's definitely a better defender than uh, on the perimeter than John Collins, but he's still, you know, Jason Tatum's a top five player in the league, arguably top three, probably, uh, you know, he's going to cook anybody out there on the wings, especially this Hawks team. Who's well, I think slow. it's definitely going to be Hunter on Tatum. And then John, and then who on John, John Collins on Jalen Brown, I guess. Oh, I think it's going to be DeJounte on Jalen Brown. And John Collins on Derek White? Man, I think you're, they got to get John Collins the hell out of the game, bro. John Collins might have to play. Uh, I'm not kidding, bro. Like, Sadiq Bay, like, put his ass in there. Start that's him. a like, good That's a good I don't choice. even think that's a ridiculous thing. Now, I don't think they'll do it, but, I mean, it is the playoffs. Like, uh, the rotations are going to be quick, right? Like, if John Collins goes out there, they're probably trying to start him out there. You know, he started every game this season. He's probably the best option. I don't know what the exact game plan. I'm interested to see it, and we'll talk about it throughout the series after we see it because I think it's going to be different than from what we saw in the regular season because if it's the same, it didn't really work. So <laughs> they got to switch things up. And I know they played the last game of the season, but none of the starters were healthy. So I'm pretty sure this is the first – maybe the second game with Quinn Snyder. Was he there the last time? No. For game three, I'm not sure, but game three didn't really count. Nobody was healthy. Game two, he was not there. So yeah, that, yeah, yeah. Okay, March 11th. I feel like he was. Uh, it was. It was close. Anyways, it, it doesn't matter. It, it, regardless, things are going to be different this time around. Yeah, I hope so. Um, uh, as far as matchups, and, and so if you go out there and they are killing you with speed and stuff like that, but at the same time, while the Celtics may be killing you with speed. On the offensive end, they're going to give up some on, on, on the defensive end. I know they're a great team defensive team, but like the rebounding has to be an issue. You have to think. You have to think you're able to take advantage of your size. Uh, and if you can't do that, then obviously you're going to have to go small. Um, but I do think Sadiq Bay gives you an option there. 
Um, I, I can't wait to see what a Kongu does there. That guy's an absolute beast. I love watching that guy play. Uh, Bogey, he's he's looked pretty well. And Jalen Johnson, man. I mean, I can't say enough about him. It, it Like, you think about things that Nate didn't do that kind of pissed you off. And, like, I I got to the point where I was like, well, Jalen Johnson just must suck, right? Like, why the hell? It, like, no, he doesn't suck. He's actually really good. And this idiot refused to play him. But he's not a shit coach. I mean, that, that's just one of those things where you're just like, what the hell? He's a like, difference maker. That He was a difference maker in that he came. Yes. He obviously had the juice. He had 10 points and seven rebounds in 14 minutes. And, like, this, and guy couple- is, this guy is is maybe a full season of playing from being better than John Collins. And he wasn't even on the floor. <laughs> yeah, I agree. He wasn't even on the floor. Like, and and, and <laughs> I don't want to like bash any Hawks fans, but it's I, it still cracks me up when, when I love Jalen Johnson. I am giving him his props, right? But then there were like the Hawks fans that were comparing him to the best version of Ben Simmons and like a poor man's LeBron James. I'm like, all right, dude. Dude, <laughs> hang on. A- after seeing what he did against the Heat, he obviously did some stuff that you didn't like, but I would chalk that up as jitters, you know, playoff jitters. I mean, yeah, just like you said, 10.7 boards, a few assists and a steal. I mean, who is that? That's Ben Simmons. Obviously, you know, he didn't, he's not Ben Simmons. I'm not saying he's an all-star or anything like that. I would say he's probably a poor man's Ben Simmons rather than a poor man's LeBron James, but still the point resonates. That's, see, yes. Yes. That is my point. I see, they're I like, see he's what the they're best saying. version of Ben Simmons or the worst version of LeBron James. So he's an all-star is basically what you're saying? Yeah, yeah. No, he I agree. An all-star or, or, and and as, at his best, he's the best player of all time. I agree. I think that he, if he can defend Jason Tatum, watch out. Watch out. I, I mean, listen. He, if look, he's on the court, we can bully them. We can bully them because John Collins can't initiate shit. You know, if Marcus yeah. Smart. This is what we've been trying to tell. This is what we've been trying to say about John Collins for years. Like he's a dunker and a three point shooter, and his three point shooter got lost. It's and gone. Now it's like, what do you do? Because he can't isolate. He can't pass. He's um, terrible. That, that's one of the defender. issues I had with the Hawks. Like, as good as like Trey Young is at passing, as good as Dejounte Murray is at passing, uh, even Bogey is a, as a playmaker. Bro, their big man are like stone hands. Like anytime they get the ball, like it's like. <laughs> Like Clint Capella is just like terrible hook shot. If he's not dunking the ball, it's the worst thing ever. Like don't let him take a dribble. Don't let him just pass it, like lob pass it out. That's all he's got. Uh, John Collins never turned into much of a passer. I kind of had hope that he would be like a little bit better, but he just isn't. Um, And same with the Kongu. Now I I love a Kongu. He's a beast, but like they just don't have a lot of guys that can facilitate outside of their two guards. I'd say Okongu is definitely better than the other two. Oh, I mean, without a doubt. I don't even think it's close, honestly. But Jalen Johnson is a legit point forward. I yes, mean, that guy can dish. Johnson is. So I think that he – I'm not saying he deserves all the minutes, but I think he deserves a chunk of those forward minutes. I, I know a lot of people probably outside of Atlanta don't believe in Jalen Johnson, but from what I've seen so far and what I saw in that Heat game – he could be a difference maker. Oh, like, I, I think truly believe that. everything I've seen in Jalen Johnson since Quinn Snyder took over tells me he should be getting minutes. And I wouldn't be surprised if he got more minutes. Like he yeah, only I got agree. 14 minutes in that in that heat game. And, and I know he's young, but like he should touch 20, dude. At the end of the day, like, what do you have to lose? Like I can I can damn well tell you if we don't have an out of body experience from someone, you're not expecting it. And the only <laughs> and one of the few guys on this team that could potentially have that, that has the potential to have just a wonderful breakout performance. It's got to be Jalen Johnson, right? Like, who else on the roster? Like, it's him or Okongwu, but, like – I was going like- to say, I could see something from DeAndre Hunter, like that that Stop last it. game in the Heat. Stop. No, no, no. I've been saying that for 27 years. Oh, shut up. That Heat game, the the last game of the Heat series last yes, year? Yes, yes. Like, like, he could give you one of those. That's what I'm saying. We're yeah, not talking right. about a whole series. We just need, you know, oh, no, I'm game. saying like I'm saying a series performance, like an out of body, like this guy just became a dude, like across the league. Like there's sometimes series where like guys that just weren't always great, all of a sudden you're like, damn, that guy's that dude. And then like a few years later, he really is that dude. Like Fred I mean, Van Fleet. Think Fred Van Fleet, like guys yeah. like that. Like there's there's it, if you're gonna just like make a run and listen, I almost think there's no way the Hawks win. I mean, we, well, I think we're plus six fifty and like minus ten thousand and minus ten thousand. Like, so 
they're basically giving you about a, a 10, 15% chance of winning. <laughs> I think there's no chance they win. I think that's generous, by the way. I would, I would not, I would never a wager a hundred bucks. No, I would not do that. I think that's generous of us getting the Hawks. But if there's ever a chance, like you got to have someone that has like star potential, kind of rise to the occasion, and like this could be that, that for Jalen Johnson if, if they have any chance. I'm, I'm not saying it's likely, obviously, but I'm just looking at the roster and who, who needs to step up next to Trey Young. If Dejounte Murray ain't going to be an All Star, I was going to say. I was going to say, what about what about the guy that we just traded a fucking boatload of picks for? Uh, I mean, he had a good game against the Heat, but we need better. Like yeah. we're going to need better. We're going to need. I mean, more he's got to be he, like up. he's he's got to be that dude. I mean, like he just hasn't been that dude, especially in the second half of the season. I mean, you look at his last ten games. I think he's averaging like sixteen points, like six assists. Yeah. Like, bro, that's, that's just it, not man. it. That's just not it. Like that is not. He's not playing at all-star. He hasn't played like an all-star. I'll say his, this, though. His defense I'll, also hasn't been good. I'll say this, though. In terms of attitude, I love our guys. Trey Young, DeJounte Murray seem like the type of guys that are going to wake up and be ready to ball. And I'm not saying Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum aren't those guys by any means, but I just feel like our guys are going to have a little bit of a chip on their shoulder. They're going to be like, nobody believes in us because nobody no does. Enough. Nobody does believe in you. No, um, I don't believe in him. But I think I think you could play to that. And I think DeJounte Murray's kind of that, you know, dog, you know, that he's ready for the bright lights. He never really had it with the Spurs. This is his chance to prove, you know, that he belongs in that category, the conversation of the top players in the league. We need it. I mean, we traded all these picks for you. And I would love to see it. And everybody just should be shut up about it. But, like, it's time to put up or shut up. Yeah, well, listen. Everyone was talking about the Heat as like this would be a scary matchup, and I get they have more experience. They have Eric Spolstra, but like Quinn Snyder ain't no fluke. And you look at like the actual talent on the Hawks roster, like there is star power there. Like those guys can rise up, and both teams, the Heat and the Hawks, are going to come into this series regardless with that attitude. You said, "Hey, you know we ain't got no one to like. No one believes in us. Like what do we got to lose? Like there's they're going to be playing loose. They're going to be playing loose, aggressive." From the get-go. And listen, I think the Celtics have enough experience to counteract that fine and, and enough depth and stuff like that. Like, I think they'll just be fine. But listen, there's no doubt about it. Like, the Hawks got nothing to lose, and that's a scary team for anything, especially in game one. And that's why game one is the key to this series if the Hawks are going to have any chance. if you, you got some momentum in the play-in game. This team, the Celtics, they've been off for, like, what, a week? Haven't played in a week. They're going to come in probably this game a little sluggish. Like, it's very normal. This happens all the time. You come in with some momentum. You're the loose team. You're the chill team. You got to punch them in the mouth in the first quarter. You got to punch them in the mouth. Because, listen, winning in Boston is one of the hardest things to do in the NBA, in all of sports. It is almost impossible. So if you're going to win this series somehow, you got to win game one. Because I don't see any other any other way as this they start to feel each other out. They, they got to punch him in the mouth from the opening whistle. And I guarantee you that's what Quinn Schneider is telling these guys. I don't think there's any doubt about it. You got to punch him in the mouth if you want to win this series and you got to win game one. Because if you win game one, doesn't matter what we all think. This series is now interesting.